I, a 23-year-old female, just wanted to share what I would call my first real encounter. Even as a lifelong skeptic, I can't explain this. If you're familiar with U.S. ghost hunting spots, you might have heard of the Copper Queen Hotel in Bisbee, Arizona. It has been open since 1902 and has been the subject of multiple paranormal investigations and shows, and there are supposedly three documented ghosts who inhabit it that of a drowned child, a man in a top hat, and a forlorn prostitute. My boyfriend and I decided on Saturday morning that we would take a trip to make up for a missed birthday. We had never gone on a real trip together, so we didn't plan it well at all. We just realized that we were about an hour and a half from Bisbee and decided to book a hotel once we got there. We chose the Copper Queen because it was the most prominent hotel in the area and is right in the middle of everything. We weren't aware of its reputation as a paranormal hotspot. The room itself was antique looking, as expected with a hotel that old. Yellowing wallpaper, splintering wood floors, dim lighting. The locks on the door were pretty flimsy and you had to actively yank it shut or it would fall open again. We joked that it looked like the Tower of Terror. After a day of walking around, we came back to get changed. We heard a creaking noise, and I had Coop check under the bed, only half seriously, but I was still relieved that nobody was there. We grabbed a lighter and went out for a smoke, then came back, showered, watched TV for a little while, and then turned out the lights. The moment that we shut the lights off, there was a variety of clicks, creaks, and pops in odd patterns. It being an old room, and us being a logical couple, we figured that it was the old fan or the wall-mounted AC. I was just listening to the noises when I felt Coop freeze up next to me. Is that you? I responded no, that it was the AC. Not that. Seriously, is that you? I asked him what he meant and waited for a minute or so before asking again. And again. Finally, he answered. I was trying to listen, babe. I hear someone breathing. We reasoned that it was the room next door and settled back into our pillows, and then I remembered that there wasn't another room on that side. Our room was the first on the landing, and the side that we were closest to, the side that Coop would have been able to hear, if at all, was the main staircase. Coop, being a 21-year-old boy, is blessed with the ability to fall asleep within seconds. I could hear him snoring, and his legs were over mine, but I was too anxious to sleep. I then felt the lightest tap on top of the quilt, just next to my feet. I froze, but tried to reason with myself that Coop had just twitched in his sleep, although his legs were still on top of mine. A few moments passed and I thought that I had imagined it, and then I felt a pinch-slash-tugging motion at the same area of the quilt. I woke up Coop and demanded that he check under the bed again. I was still reasoning that there was a non-supernatural explanation for the events, and it occurred to me that although we had checked before leaving our walk, we hadn't checked after. The flimsy lock and the fact that the door was difficult to close made it seem likely that someone could have snuck in. Coop was too groggy to be useful, so I grabbed my phone, turned the flashlight on, and leapt as far from the bed as I could while crouching to check what was under it. Nothing. We were both a little freaked out by this point and agreed to turn the TV back on to drown out any weird noises. We turned on Futurama and settled back into bed for the third time. Again, Coop fell asleep within seconds. I was drifting off when I heard the audio on the TV kind of cut somehow. It suddenly shifted tone to where it sounded like a grainy VHS instead of a streaming adult cartoon. I heard a woman saying something about a phantom, and then a blood-curdling scream from the TV. At this point, I was too scared to open my eyes, so I steadied my breathing and pretended to be asleep. That's the last event that I could recall, and upon checking out the next day, the manager asked if we had experienced anything. That's when we googled the hotel and found out its history of hauntings. 
So there it is. Nothing too crazy compared to other posts here, but I have definitely never experienced anything like that before and don't have an explanation besides the paranormal. This story is from 2013. I travel a lot for work. I mean, before COVID. And when I do, I stay at hotels. Sleeping in a different bed doesn't bother me as I'm mostly a sound sleeper, and I'm used to it given that I've been doing this for a while. This was a hotel in the suburbs of Chicago. From the time I checked into the room, I think it was room number 413. I have never felt such a sense of dread, despair, and claustrophobia. I am a rational person, no history of depression or mental illness, so I explained it to myself that maybe the 13 in the room number was messing with my head. But I've stayed in other hotel rooms with the 13 in my assigned room number. I had also stayed at the same property every week over the last few months, but I had never felt this way. I pondered while lying in bed if I should call the front desk and ask for another room. I didn't know what excuse that I would give to them. Everything was great with the room. The shower was fine. The room was spotless. The toilet had no issues. It was a boring, predictable, clinically consistent room like any other Marriott property. No complaints on the Wi-Fi. I couldn't bring myself to lie to the front desk and ask to be changed to another room. So I told myself I was a rational man, a husband, a father, and a protector. I decided that I was going to stay put. The uneasiness didn't lessen, so I turned on every light in the room, took out all the Bibles from the bedstands, and set them next to me. I am not of the Christian faith, and not very religious either, but I felt like I needed all the protection I could get. So I played chants on loop on YouTube from my own religion all night at low volume until I went to sleep. I woke up in the morning, worked out, showered, and went to work. The night's experience felt like a fleeting memory during the day. I had a really fun rental that week, a Mustang GT, and it was so much fun, the night's memory almost felt imaginary entirely. I came back from work that evening, feeling a little silly about the night before, and went back to the room. In an instant, the same sense of unexplained dread and claustrophobia came flooding back. I just couldn't rationally explain it. So I went back to the routine from the night before. Lights on, chanting, Bible, Marriott, Mormon Bible, all by the bed. Next evening, I spoke with the bartender and asked him if he had heard any weird complaints. He said he hadn't, but he'd ask around. When I came back the next week, I got a different room, but I checked in with the bartender. He said he had done a little digging over the weekend and picked up on gossip from the other hotel staff that some of the cleaning ladies didn't like that room and even that corner of the fourth floor. He was intrigued enough that he brought along a sensitive friend of his from his Episcopalian church and said that when she opened the door and had barely taken a step inside that she just made a 180 degree turn and came right back out. She couldn't even go inside and said that it felt heavy. The bartender said that it was enough to spook him. He said he just stood in the corridor and refused to go in after that. We kind of had a laugh about it and figured that we would Google the property address to see if there were documented murders or suicides, but there was nothing. The property changed hands a few times. There was a nearby fire with some deaths, but nothing notable as far as Google search goes. I didn't think much of it, but I have stayed more than 2,000 nights in hotels since the fall of 2013, and I have yet to experience that fear ever. I continue to rethink about the memory of my experience, trying to recount the details about the room, the week, maybe the mood at work, just so I could find something rational to explain what I had felt and I have been unable to. Myself and a few friends go on a road trip every summer to visit haunted places. In 2018, we stayed at a haunted hotel in the northeastern United States and had to sign a safety waiver just to stay there. 
It was a small country hotel and the only other party had canceled, so we had the place to ourselves with our tour guide. We had a spirit box type of device, which I've been skeptical of, but we all carried on conversations. There was a moment where I heard my name through the box when I had never said my name and even said my full name. I prefer a shortened version. We spent a lot of time upstairs in a room where the quote-unquote ladies of the night would sleep and I was prohibited from sitting on the bed by a spirit that was allegedly the lady's bodyguard. I sat down only for a few seconds and as soon as I stood, the bed lifted up and dropped, scaring the hell out of me and at least one of my friends witnessed this. We went upstairs to an unfinished floor that was under renovation. There was an old ornate chair that was used by a notorious Irish Mafia hitman that stayed at the hotel frequently. We went in a circle saying our names to see if the spirit, Joe, would let one of us sit in the chair. I said mine, and a light that we were using started to flicker like crazy. This is especially odd because I have red hair, and as far as I know, I was the only one in our group of Irish descent. Our guide asked if he was sure that he wanted me to sit there, and he replied, F yeah, through the box. I took the invitation and sat in the chair, and oddly enough, I felt some kind of strange power surge through me. I eventually stood and thanked Joe, and from the spirit box I heard, you're welcome. Later that night is when the real event happened. Our guide said, now I don't normally do this, but since there are only four of you, I'd like to take you down to the morgue. It wasn't so much of a morgue, but it was stone walls and a dirt floor, and it was cold as hell. We were in a corner of the room when our guide said, I don't want to scare you, but there's something standing right behind you. I saw a shadow on the wall, but it was cast by my friend B. That's when B moved to the side, and there was another shadow underneath his. It was taller than anyone in the room, and gave off an intimidating presence. I looked back, and saw no one standing in front of the light source, and when I looked back again, there was no shadow. I've always been skeptical, but believed in the supernatural to a degree. Believe me when I say that basement had something seriously dark down there. Something evil. I have never felt so vulnerable in my life. The whole night we felt like we were being watched and could hear footsteps around the hotel. I'd love to go back and get some more evidence someday. I've done paranormal investigations for a few years now, but that one night stay at that hotel was enough to completely convince me. There is definitely something beyond death, and perhaps the most terrifying part? Not everything on that side is friendly. In 2001, I was big into ghost hunting. I was looking online for a haunted weekend road trip destination and came across the Jefferson Hotel in Jefferson, Texas. About the only thing it said was that room 19 was quote-unquote uninhabitable. Now that really piqued my interest, so I called them up and asked if it was true. The lady at the front desk laughed and just said, no, we booked that room all the time. So I reserved it. I was so excited, but didn't really think that anything would happen. I'd been to several supposedly haunted hotels and B&Bs and had no results. Now, I'm not sensitive like some people. I always hear people say, I felt like someone was watching me. I have no idea what that means. The only thing I noticed when I walked in the room was a faint, musky smell of an old-fashioned perfume. I set up a recorder in the room and headed out to explore the town. It was like going back in time. If you live in Texas and are looking for a road trip, I highly recommend Jefferson. When I got back to the room, I turned off the recorder and looked out its one window to see a large bust of Thomas Jefferson in the courtyard. I then sat down on the bed to relax and watch some TV. After a bit, something caused me to look back up at the window, and I saw something. A red smudge on the glass. I frowned and got up to see what it was. I hadn't noticed any red smudges earlier. I looked closely. 
It was more like a streak of red in a greasy substance of some sort. Then I noticed more streaks, and then more. I gradually began to realize that these were letters. My heart began to race as I backed up to take it all in. These streaks of red were spelling out, help me. I kind of just collapsed on the bed, my heart still racing. I knew without a doubt in my mind that those letters were not there 15 minutes earlier. I just sat in disbelief for about five minutes. Needless to say, there was not much sleep to be had that night. As I left the hotel the next morning, I was disappointed to see that there was no one behind the desk. I really needed to talk to someone. I left a note about the writing and said that I would call them on Monday. When I called, I told the woman who answered who I was and she said, hold on just a moment. She put the housekeeping lady on the phone. I asked, did you see it? She said, yes, I saw it. And then she said, just before you arrived, I raised the blinds and turned on the AC. There was no writing. And the strangest thing was when I attempted to clean it off. She said that it was like the letters had been engraved into the glass. I told her that I was freaked out and she confirmed that she was too. By the way, on the way home I listened to the tape that I had had running in the room while I was gone. What I heard was the sound of the closet door angrily slamming several times and something shuffling around. But what really got to me was the sound of a woman sobbing. About 11 years ago, a group of friends and myself drove to Mineral Wells, Texas for a spontaneous midnight exploration of the long-abandoned and supposedly haunted Baker's Hotel. It was incredibly creepy inside. The place was pitch black and littered with old pieces of dusty, moldy furniture and decor from the 50s and 60s, whenever it was last operating. The first thing that freaked us out was that it sounded like the building was breathing and loudly. Turned out it was just flooding in the basement that was echoing through the elevator shafts. Anyways, we started exploring everywhere. By the time we got to the seventh floor, we were a little disappointed that nothing weird had happened yet. The adrenaline was kind of wearing off. We started walking down this long hallway on the seventh floor, peeking into various rooms and peering around with our flashlights. All of a sudden, we heard a door, coming from the end of the hallway we were moving toward, slowly open, and then slowly close. It was creaking very loudly, just like in a scary movie. It scared us, and we froze. We were close enough that our flashlights reached the door in question. It was some kind of small, weird door, framed inside of a larger, regular door. My friend wanted to turn around and leave. We thought maybe there was a homeless person in there, and they were trying to scare us off. Nonetheless, I convinced him to keep going because I had to go in the room now. We started walking slowly toward the door, all the while saying stuff out loud like, we're just exploring, if someone's in there, we're just messing around, things like that. We were probably about 15-ish feet away when the door suddenly began opening again, eerily and slowly like before. However, this time, it slammed shut, right in front of our eyes. Again, we were scared, frozen. Again, I insisted that we keep going. A minute or so later, we worked up the courage and just barged right in that door as fast as we could. What was in there? Absolutely nothing. There was no possible explanation for whatever had opened and closed and then slammed that door. There were no cracked windows allowing for the airflow from outside. There was nothing. We shut the door behind us and sat down in nervous disbelief and then chain smoked a couple of cigarettes each. We finally left and actually went through the rest of the building.
I work at the front desk of a hotel, and within the last six months, we had a guest that passed away in one of our rooms. Because of this pandemic, my boss is blocked off the room, even after deep cleaning, just to be safe. Due to the hotel business not doing well, he also had a couple of rooms cut off from power, which means that none of the electronics are working for those rooms. Now, our hotel has two phones up at the front, one for external calls and the other specifically for internal lines, which are only connected to the phones in each guest room. I was having a quiet day during my shift alone business isn't running as normal and all the housekeepers had left for the day and the only staff there was the maintenance guy and I. I get an internal phone call from one of the rooms and answer it as I usually do and it's just static noises along with an occasional cut in between like the noise that you get when you unplug your headphones from a device. I didn't think anything of it at first and thought that it was a guest accidentally calling the front desk so I waited a little bit to hang up. Then, I realized that the call was from the same room where the guest had passed away, and that there was no way a call could be made from that room because the phone was unplugged. I was a little bit spooked, so I asked the maintenance guy, who was just chilling in the back office, to go and check out the room and make sure that the power was still out. He comes back and sure enough the phone is still unplugged, and he even took a picture of it. He also has a log of what rooms have power, electronics, etc. We even checked the lobby cameras to make sure that no one had gone into the rooms. And there was nothing. No housekeepers went in or out of the room at all within the past week. Just as we were done checking the camera footage, I received another call from that same exact room. And this time it was silent for a good 10 seconds or so, and then the same static noise, but this time much louder. I hung up the phone so fast, a guest asked if everything was okay. I didn't tell her. I tried to think of every scientific possible way that this could have been an internal mistake, such as an outside sales call accidentally getting caught within our internal call system, but that's just impossible to begin with, especially if the phone cord was not plugged in. Myself, my younger cousin, and a couple of friends stayed recently at one of the most haunted places in Texas and America. As a kid, I had heard stories of this old hotel and the dark history behind it. In recent years, a few paranormal shows showcased and did some investigations there. When I saw in our local news that the Magnolia Hotel was opening back up for visitors to stay the night, I was stoked. When you stay the night, you get two rooms, regardless of whether you're staying by yourself or you're bringing company. Also, you get the whole second story to yourself for you to investigate. There is a door that separates the hotel, updated, side, and the haunted rooms side. To be fair, the rooms that you stay in are haunted as well. The entire hotel is haunted. Needless to say, I recorded so much activity on tape and in person in my own experiences. The findings I have will raise the hairs on your body. I was hearing voices, seeing shadows, hearing footsteps, showing the EVP sessions and hearing our names. I actually got touched twice and the second time was so chilling. We were outside of this room that had a ton of activity. My friend had the dousing rods. She asked if there was a spirit, and three times it pointed directly at me. She asked if the spirit was next to me. The rod said no. She asked if it was behind me, and they said yes. At that moment, I felt someone grab my right shoulder and slowly move their hand down my back. I got cold chills and felt tingling and numbing for a good few minutes. I am planning to go back very soon. I am a sensitive. I attract ghosts, and I go ghost hunting quite a bit. I have other experiences from several places that are extremely haunted here in Texas and in other states as well.
I can't get this experience out of my head, no matter how many years have passed. This happened way back in the early 2000s. I was in the 8th grade and we were on a trip. I stayed in a hotel with two other girls. One of them was my friend and another girl who we were just somewhat acquainted with. The first night in the room, during my shower, I felt like someone was behind me. Like standing really close to my back under the shower spray. I turned around quickly, but no one was there. So I continued showering, but the feeling just got worse. When I finished my shower, I pulled open the curtain, and when I looked up at the gigantic wall mirror, I saw a grotesque face behind my right shoulder. It was gone within seconds. I think I stood frozen there for a whole minute before I practically ran out, screaming. The next day, we were getting ready to go out. The girl we roomed with said that someone was in our room last night. She heard the toilet flush, the sink turn on, but then nothing. No one entered the room. No one left. And no one else but us was in there to begin with. We know because we checked every nook and cranny after she told us. The second night, when we got back to our hotel room, I suddenly felt super sleepy, like I literally fell to the floor once I stepped inside. It was odd because I wasn't sleepy at all until we actually walked into the room. The other two couldn't move me since I had an extra 50 pounds on them, so they just covered me up with the blanket, put a pillow under my head, and left me there. Then my friend said that sometime during the night I had gotten up, used the bathroom, and crawled into the bed. But I don't remember doing that. In fact, when I woke up on the third day, I was still on the floor. I've had a few unexplained experiences over the decades, but the Gold Hill Hotel is my favorite spooky tale. I was staying the weekend at the hotel with friends and my then boyfriend. It was a really memorable weekend because it was the Christmas holiday season and the hotel was decked out. We were all drinking and it was quite festive. There was a female jazz singer from San Francisco who was staying at the hotel and who played carols on the piano. My boyfriend went up to the room before me and passed out drunk in the bed. I followed not long after. Later that night, I awoke suddenly to someone jerking the blankets off of me. It was the force of the jerk on the blankets that woke me up. I immediately looked over at my snoring, drunk boyfriend sleeping on his side, and then down at the blankets themselves. They had been pulled down to my waist, and down off of him. I slowly pulled them back up and curled up next to him. I slept very little the rest of the night. The next day, I asked him if he recalled anything unusual, but he didn't, and poo-pooed my experience. Later, I found out that we were staying in one of the rooms that visitors commonly reported having blankets pulled off of them. I can't recall the specifics of the ghost that actually haunts the room, but I sure do remember that moment when the blankets were laying down below my waist and pulled off of my boyfriend and realizing that maybe we weren't alone in our room. My boyfriend and I decided to take an impromptu trip to Gettysburg and booked a decently priced hotel the night before. The first night I fell asleep no problem, but the second night, not so much. He had already gone to bed, and I had just shut the light off. As soon as the light was out, I could hear paper or bags shuffling around on our TV stand, and I thought that he had gotten up to look for something. I looked up, and of course no one was there, but I instantly felt terrified and felt the presence of someone standing at the foot of our bed. It only lasted about a minute or so, and then suddenly there was a loud bang, like a door being slammed in the room above us, and the feeling disappeared. When we got home, my boyfriend, who doesn't believe in the supernatural at all, extremely reluctantly brought up how the first night that we stayed, he got up to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night and immediately got creeped out and thought that someone was in our room. 
He went into the bathroom and felt like someone was standing directly behind him. Of course, Gettysburg has tons of history. But after doing some research, I haven't found much information about the hotel or what may have been there before. Whatever happened in our room didn't feel harmless, though. I should start by saying that I am sensitive, but have never known about or tried any of my abilities to sense the paranormal. I recently stayed at the Stanley Hotel in New York. After pulling onto the property, I immediately felt extremely uneasy and had a sense of dread. Just an overall bad feeling about the place. After entering the building, I started feeling nauseous and lightheaded like I was going to pass out, and weird stabbing pains were all around my head not a normal headache. As the night progressed, I started getting flashing images in my head depicting horrible, violent, graphic scenes of myself being stabbed and choked, and figures who were standing over me. I felt as if I weren't alone in my own head. I felt random bursts of anger and sadness and would want to either hurt the people that I was with or just start hysterically crying. I have never felt so out of control, like my head was in a fog, and everything that was happening was a dream, like I was there in my head, but I couldn't control my body. It has been five days since I left, and I still don't feel like myself. What happened to me in that hotel? This took place in the summer of 2010. I was with my family and we went down to the USA for vacation that year. We stayed at the hotel we normally stayed at, which was a Red Roof Inn. As we walked in, something felt off about the room, and I thought to myself that it must be just nothing. Over the next few nights, always around 3 in the morning, my mother and I would hear a knocking against the wall. At first we thought, oh, maybe it's just the people next door. However, the room was empty, and we thought nothing of it until it kept happening. I was wondering, could it possibly be haunted? My mother, being super into the paranormal and believing in this as I do myself, we decided to take a statue of the Archangel Michael from my dad's dashboard. It was super small, nothing big, and the next thing you know, we never heard the knocking for the rest of the trip. So it is possible that the room was haunted, and after doing some reading, we think that it could have been a poltergeist. I am on an extended stay at a hotel away from my home for military reasons. The first two weeks were fine, but now I've been waking up between 4 and 5 a.m. every night, feeling like someone is watching me from one specific side of the room. Last night it started around 10 p.m. and nearly kept me up all night. I only feel this at my hotel room. Not when I go home on my off-duty days. I live on the second floor, so it can't be coming from the window. It is only one specific side of the room, which is a little unsettling. Last night it got so intense that what little sleep that I did get was with the light on. I have a history of sleep paralysis and other sleep issues, but this is something that I have never felt before. I have had multiple experiences with the unexplained and paranormal side of things, but this just seems different. Could this be my own paranoia? Paranoia. <laughs> 